Morning, wake up uh, back your way, 1320 WILS. Uh, great to have you here as we uh, wind our way through the uh, the beginning of what is the long uh, Thanksgiving holiday weekend. And if you've arrived at it, well, uh, we salute you. If you haven't quite got there yet, you will. Um, a lot of interesting stories we've been following, some of a very uh, disturbing nature, and of course the ongoing um, issue over refugees and Syrian refugees and and blocking refugees from Syria and Iraq, emerging here as as a hurdle to overcome, a yet another one, in in Congress. Um, are the Republicans doing the right thing with wanting to put the brakes on and you know hit the pause button, have more uh, vetting and verification here, or is that basically um, politicizing the situation, oversimplifying? Uh, where we've seen, you know, really a different demographic compared to the ones coming into Europe. There have been a lot of young men there. And, you know, the 10,000 that are supposed to come to the United States, they do take a very long time to get vetted coming through here. So there's two different viewpoints uh, to look at. But, of course, the political factor can never uh, be denied. Political analysts and strategists here on the GOP side, uh, Jebby, uh, Debbie uh, Georgiados, uh, joining us this morning. Good morning, Debbie. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing, Dave? I'm doing well here, and I uh, hope you are too. So let's talk a little bit about this. And I guess, uh, you know, the the I'll just ask you flat out: ha, Has there been when we look back at this, maybe in a month or two, will we say that this was oversimplified and over politicized, um, or will we say this was a tipping point towards something bigger? I mean, what's your, what's your, what's your take on this right now? I do think the past episodes that the uh, battles between the Congress and the president that have led to threatened shutdowns have been, uh, you know, have a wide range of importance. But this particular issue of bringing more Syrian and other Islamic refugees to America, when the head of the FBI has said we have no basis to vet these people, this is, and so it is a security risk. I don't think this is political. I think it's a sad commentary in America that even is political. I think that the uh, GOP is hearing loud and clear from America's governors. They're hearing from the electorate. It's, it's something like 60 percent of Americans are saying, please don't bring any more of these refugees here right now because we can't actually vet them. I'm sorry that it is political, but I think it's an opportunity for the GOP to really stand up and, and have a message that resonates with the American people that we agree with you. We are facing a serious threat, and there's no reason to bring more um, of these refugees here when we could help them over in the, wherever they, whether they're still in Syria, where they have left and are in other refugee camps in that part of the world. I, I just, I wish it weren't political. And I think the GOP has the upper hand on this. And I think President Obama is going to start hearing from Democrats in the House and Senate saying, look, we don't want to have to go back to our voters and say we still with President Obama on this issue. I think he's going to feel some pressure he hasn't felt on the other issues that led to a potential shutdown. Debbie, um, it was a hearing uh, with questions from our own um, local congressman here, Mike Bishop, uh, from the Michigan 8th to James Comey that brought forth the answer where he said on October 22nd that it's a good news, bad news thing. The good news is with our um, occupation um, of Iraq, we became very good um, at vetting the Iraqi refugees by and large. But with the Syrians, um, he just basically said the process is okay, but it will always bring back a blank slate because there is no data to input to cross-reference. And that was that was the problem. So, I mean, is it really a case of we don't want to take these people, or is it a case of let's find a better way to vet and still be humanitarians rather than just say a blanket no? I mean, what is it in your mind? I don't think, given all the factors where we are, as we stand now in November of 2015, watching the various battle fronts around the world where Islamist jihadists are on the move. They are on the, they're taking aggressive action toward the West and toward um, you know, Christian nations. And so I just right. think they're, um, I don't see it as a... But they're killing I mean, a lot of these people. To... But they're killing a lot of these people, too. They're killing them in mass, too, which is why m many of them want to get away. I mean, so we have to we have to have some humanitarian care for that, don't we? I, I definitely agree, and I think I love America's history of being a generous and compassionate nation. 
We have ways to help them in the refugee camps that already exist. And there are actually large refugee camps in Turkey and in countries over in the Middle East where we can help them there. But the, the risk always is, and this is what gets to the heart of the American concern, is we don't know what's in people's hearts. This whole battle of Islamic jihadists against the West, they're not military uniforms. There's not a way to find out when with people who have embraced or have been raised in, in, in Islam, how, are you someone who is at least sympathetic to terrorism? Do you think it's maybe okay? Are you strongly against it? Even though they've been the victims of ISIS themselves, we don't know what ask, what segment within Islam really where their hearts are, and there's no way to find that out. And so I think given America is already fighting in all 50 states, as you guys also said, fighting in all 50 states, potential ISIS terrorism, people okay. who are right. find, ISIS ter- find terrorism online, are, are radicalized, we just don't need to bring more people here susceptible to that. So vetting is the least of our problems, but it's a major problem. But really the larger question is until we have a stronger battlefront on the West against the rise of Islamic jihad, jihadism, why would they want people here who may be vulnerable to it? It doesn't seem wise. Okay, now i got to ask you this then. Would you close down all immigration? Because you just said you can't know people's hearts. I mean, I get that. I understand that. But we're never going to know people's hearts. We're only going to be able to vet the data, you know, the big data that we have or that we don't have. And then and then you kind of roll the dice and say you're either coming in or not. If you need to know people's hearts, wouldn't, are you saying that close down immigration in general? No, I don't think we have to quote. No, I, I wouldn't be suggesting that. I do want to share something, though, with you and your listeners. There's a, a great article out that yeah, on the Daily Caller, but it's talking about we have right now the way we vet these people. We're able to ask these people about their you know, their history, if we have any, you know, what their mm-hmm. lives are all about. We can take biographic information, name and date of birth. But even under President Obama's counterterrorism instructions, they, their training is given to Homeland Security. Homeland Security, who is doing these interviews, can not ask these people questions such as, do you support the Muslim Brotherhood? That's mm-hmm. an impermissible question. So we ask them background questions, but the whole approach towards this battle the world has faced with jihadism in the last you know decade and more, we have in America and our own uh, processes and our own training manuals, right. training manuals that the military uses, we have removed any reference to the only important questions to ask. And so we don't ask them, uh-huh. we can't ask them questions just like that. So until we can get our our training men have got on track, our willingness to be more overt. I mean, people are frustrated because President Obama will never call jihadism or radical Islam what it is. He won't even put terrorism in the same sentence with, with uh, radical Islam. We have a just that, that tone deaf refusal to deal with a problem, and that makes it impossible to do the vetting. Debbie Giorgiatos is a political analyst and strategist, has been a guest to hear before. Debbie, we always uh, appreciate your, your viewpoint here. It sounds like to, to sum it up here, you're, you're saying, you know, we should have that the, that the process is available to do better vetting, but we have to be able to ask those specific questions. And if you can't ask those specific questions, you're never going to get to the answers you need to make a proper decision on a refugee or even, you know, uh, someone seeking asylum. Would, would that am I, am I summing you up correctly there? Dave, I think that was a great summary. And I do think the bottom line, the federal government's job is to protect the American people, number one job. And right now, given all the factors in the world, I think they're not doing that job well. I think the GOP will win this battle with President Obama. So stay strong. Well, see, we even talked about that with the Pew Research numbers on uh, yesterday's show. And amazingly, it's something Democrats and Republicans agreed on. Uh, That's the highest form of duty for the federal government. They just didn't agree on how to go about doing it. And so there's always a difference between red, blue and and the R's and D's. Uh, Debbie, George Otis, we appreciate you being here as always. Dave, thanks for having me. All right. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. More coming up. Don't go away. This is The Morning Wake Up on their holiday week. 1320 WILS.